Look what I made. This is the wood I'm using for the guitar stand. It's from a reclaimed bar top, nice piece of mahogany, and it has dowels in it. But by a bit of canny cutting and joining, I think I can cut around all these pieces of dowel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice jointing edge here, then I'm going to cut it here and fold it back on itself just to make the leg at the front. easier than I thought it was going to be. This is what I'm aiming for, this sort of angle here, so that I, so the base will come across here, there'll be a sort of a curve along there. We have the front there and the back here. Should look good. So I've just got to uh, do a joint and for that I'm going to use the router. I want to use this mitre fence off my table saw, um, but I need to put a slot in the top of my homemade router table. I've given up on the router table because it just isn't accurate enough. You've got to be very careful to hold the work in place against the fence. I tried clamping it but it's just the wrong shape really, it's too wide to clamp. And uh, I think the, the fence was flexing as well and if you can see it's just it's just all over the place, it's just not, not the right uh, tool for the job. So in the end I just used it for rough hogging out of material. It hasn't even done that very well actually, I think because of the shavings underneath some of the uh, passes were getting lifted slightly with shavings, I should have been a bit more careful cleaning it. But uh, I will carry on with the traditional methods of using saw, chisel, and actually because I've hogged all the material out I could use a flush cut saw. Um, in fact I probably will. the best joint ever but it's a firm joint so let's get it glued
terribly prepared wood. A slight gap in my joint here. It wasn't perfect, but uh, you live and learn. I'm not sure I'll be going to be using the router table. <laughs> this joint's perfect, and this joint's going to get cut away, which is uh, a shame, really. But uh, I, I'll probably fill that with a little bit of super glue or something. Right, this is the template that I used for the cheap and cheerful stand, and I'm just going to use it just to get the basic dimensions right, and then um, we'll do something with a little flare. I'm going to cut the, the base off here and here. And just mark where the actual template goes. This one will be slightly shorter. We'll cut it off at about this point so we lose this corner here. So I'm sort of feeling that we're going to have some sort of curve here. And come up there and the guitar will rest here. The guitar should be no further back than here. So, I guess draw that line in. This is what I think I'm going for. It's all smooth curves, but there are some straight lines in here. There's a straight line there, there's a straight line there that the whole thing stands on. There's a straight line there and there that the guitars rest on. A slight neck there and then there's a straight line there which equates to where the guitar is leaning when it's there so that's a void behind the guitar and we've just got this subtle little curve here just to take the, the straight lines away from it after careful consideration I've decided I'm going to use the super glue masking tape trick to stick these two pieces together and process them as one piece and that way we get some consistency and it saves time. here a round over bit and I'm just going to go over the edges. It's a shame <laughs> I've still got that. I'm not sure what to do with that. Actually uh, it was in the middle. I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was going to 
get removed with the roundover bit. Oh well. Here's my original easy stand and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my bevel to mark the angle I've got this. What's the easiest way of doing this? Like so. I think we're there. I did wonder whether to have it a bit narrower at the top, have more of a taper, but uh, I think that will do. This bit I'm really nervous about because I can't really get the accuracy I want with this pillar drill because the column moves. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try and drill with me pushing the column over so that it, I can get it a bit more precise. I've also gotta be very careful how far I go I've uh, just it's only pressed in but I've got the finest slither of dowel in here and the idea is that it just locates in the other hole if I can get it in there where is it oh, hang on. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a hinge here and so when it closes it's just to give it a little bit more stability. Now for the really tricky bit. We've got to attach a hinge. Now the hinge will attach to this piece about here and the reason here is I'm not going to recess it but if I position it this far back from the top then the two sides should come together flush like so. And I've got this as perpendicular as I can with the foot of the stand. And I'm wondering whether you can see what the problem is going to be in terms of putting it all together. Because of course we've then got to attach the other half and it won't open up to be able to, uh, to allow us to screw it in. And so what we're going to have to do is somehow find the positions of all the holes, the corresponding positions in the other side, drill through and use bolts to attach the other side. So <laughs> the first thing to do, I believe I've got this in the right place, before anything has a chance to move I am going to mark all the positions of holes and drill them. The importance of accuracy here is not so much for the position of the screws that are going to hold this, it's more for the positioning of the holes in the corresponding piece. Now we have to transfer those holes onto here. I'm now going to drill pilot holes all the way through because I've got to recess the other side for the bolts and then drill the 4mm holes that the bolts are, but these are just 2mm pilot holes. <laughs> I'm using a half inch drill bit to recess the hole so that the bolts aren't standing proud of the surface. <laughs> Now 
four millimetre holes. I'm going to hand hold this in the hope that the drills find their own way. I hope I'm right. <laughs> in there. Not going to glue it in yet. And now for the tricky bit. How easy is it going to be to lo locate all these bolts? Actually maybe it might not be too bad actually. So how many of you actually spotted the error? We're about to see exactly what the error is, providing I can get these washers and nuts in place. So I, uh, I think I need to, yeah, I need to hold it up from underneath. Is it obvious yet? But the thing about errors is how you recover from them. And hopefully this is eminently recoverable. Right, let's tighten that up and show you the problem. So, the problem. I lined the hinges up so that they were in line with that slope. So that lines up with that and that lines up with that. And as such I've achieved a remarkably good fit. But of course the hinge actually needs to go closer because it should be lining up, well it, it, it shouldn't be lining up with that surface. That surface should be vertical when, when the, uh, the hinge is, is fully open. So what I've got to do is I've got to take a little bit more off each one. I still want the same slope on these but I need to take another amount off each side in the hope that uh, effectively the hinge then gets closer to that joint. So I don't think this is a problem, we've just got to go back to the planing and um, it'll probably make for a more stable joint anyway by having a little bit more off here but we've got a bit more planing to do. now looking really nice. Although I might have to just fiddle with the hinge a little bit just to get that mating a little bit better. But the, um, the dowel really does help to stabilise the whole thing and that's, that's really solid. So I'm very happy with that. I'm just going to fill a couple of little cracks in the joint. And the way I'm going to do this a little bit of sanding and it disappears. Spot of super glue and some more sanding. gone up through the grits and I've um, gone up to 400 grit and I'm going to apply tongue oil but I realise I've made a bit of a mistake here because you can get quick drying tongue oil and this is going to take 24 hours to to dry and hence it's late at night and I know I've got to get this coat on and otherwise I'm not going to get this finished because it's going to be late tomorrow night when I uh, do the next coat. Um, the first coat I'm going to I'm going to dilute with uh, with white spirit I'm going to do this 50-50. Fairly sparing. I want a fair bit of it, but uh, I don't want any wastage. So that's 50-50. And I realise I haven't got anything to stir it with. This is a bit of a grubby, grubby jam. I'm <laughs> let me do that again. Let me. I'm going to get a cleaner, cleaner jam jar. Oops. Right. Let's try that again. We'll put plenty on. Wipe it in. And be quite generous with it. And we're going to leave it um, 20 minutes. Hang on. 
Yeah, we're going to leave it for 20 minutes and then come back and we're going to wipe any excess off. And that's important, otherwise it just won't dry. And you'll end up with a sticky mess. It doesn't appear to have raised the grain particularly. I've masked off the area, although the masking tape is having a problem sticking. Um, I think it was a mistake putting a first uh, coat of, uh, of oil on, but um, at least there won't be a second coat on, although I suspect it's going to seep under the masking tape and lift it all, but we'll see. Um, I, I suspect I might have to super glue the felt pads on when I put them on. I don't think the self-adhesive is going to work because of the, the oil finish. I'm just going to try a little bit of wire wool. Um, I don't like the residue this leaves with the tiny little bits, but uh, we'll give it a go. And wipe off the excess. I'll do this one first. Now I could spend several more days applying coats of tongue oil. Um, I think ideally you need at least another couple of coats but uh, I think the more you can apply the, 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 the deeper the finish gets. To speed things up I'm going to apply a couple of coats of this finishing wax which hopefully will give a similar result to multiple coats of tongue oil. Hmm, fairly solid. Hmm, looks like it's shrunk. I hope this is in good condition. It's sort of shrunk away from the packaging. Though. I guess that's okay. Now, a little tip I picked up from Ben Crow. So I'm going to apply this with wire wool. That's not the tip, but I'm going to heat this up with my hairdryer first. That is the tip and hopefully it'll go on a, a lot easier. Oh, some of the masking tape's coming off. Second coat of wax. These are the felt pads I'm going to use for the uh, protection. Ooh, they're very firm, actually. I'll have those mould around the edges. I guess they will once they're cut up. I think the chances of me getting the uh, foam pads to stick are fairly slim so I'm going to I'm going to scrape away some of the finish. The masking tape has done its trick though it's but this feels a bit waxy. There's no wax on here but it's the oil finish it just gives it a waxy feel to the surface which might go away with time but I don't really have time. So the question is, having scraped... Oh, by the way, I haven't scraped finish away. I've just scraped some of the surface away. This is um, a penetrating oil and tongue oil. And it isn't like a finish that sits on the surface. It's, it's, it soaks into the wood. So even though I've scraped away at the surface, uh, it, it looks the wood looks far more natural, but there will still be traces of tongue oil in there, which may well be dry. Um, but we'll see. Um, I, I have my doubts about this personally. I might have to put super glue on it, although super glue might have it might have trouble adhering. But if it doesn't stick, I mean, I can add super glue and all will be good. I would hope. I'm going to put it about there. Oh. 
the felt's really stiff actually and it's not sticking which doesn't bode well for when I've got to go around the contours at the bottom so it's super glue time Well, I eventually got this to stick, but it, it needed two applications of super glue, so I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Whether I, I have a feeling the super glue might be priming the surface, and then once that's a, a good stable surface with no tongue oil in it, you can then glue to it. Either that, or the super glue is reacting with the adhesive on the felt pad, which then comes off, and then when you put the felt pad back on, there's no longer any adhesive on it and it finally sticks. I, I don't know what's happening but I'll see if, I'll, I'll try again and see if I can get this to, to glue down in one go. Um, hopefully by eventually, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I'll eventually learn what's happening here and I can do it a little bit more efficiently but uh, let's see what happens. I, I think I'm just going to have to super glue along the entire length of this. Um, but, well, you know, we'll, we'll get there, but it, it's not as simple as I was hoping. I'm only going to glue the first bit down because it's going to take a second go, I think, to uh, bend it around the, around the bend. I maybe should have used accelerator. There will be a small edit while I wait 60 seconds. 60 seconds are up and it hasn't stuck at all. Now the question is why? The super glue is now dry so what is happening here? That's still sticky with adhesive but some of it might be coming off. I honestly don't know what's happening. Let's go again. This could take a long time. So that has now stuck. So as an experiment for the next bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put super glue on the surface and we'll spread it around a little bit. And I won't stick the foam down. I'll hit that with accelerator. If it's the fact that I'm having to prepare the wood surface in order to stick to it, then by well, let, let's let's first of all try to stick the foam on there. Although I don't think the glue. Oh, in fact, <laughs> that's interesting. The foam, the the felt has stuck to the super glue surface. So I think this is the problem. We've got to prime the surface with super glue. It, it's the tongue oil that's causing the problem here. <laughs> oh my word. Now we've got rubber on this surface. The adhesive, so... <laughs> Let's clean that off and then super glue this back down again. So, <laughs> so I think I found out what the problem is. You have to prime the surface. You can't glue onto anything that's been treated with tongue oil, which kind of makes sense. Trying to glue onto oil is never really going to work well, is it? So, so what we're doing is just spreading super glue around and the central strip. Spread out. It might be that this foam, just keep calling it foam, this felt will now stick um, without any uh, persuasion. To be honest, I think we'll still have to super glue the foam on the. the the foam, the felt. I think we'll still have to super glue it, but let, let, let's see. I imagine the problem is going to be with it lifting here. We might have to push some super glue under there. But that does.
does seem to have stuck real reasonably well. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Stands incredibly solid considering there's no cross brace and it's it's all to do with the dowel that I placed in the head because without it locked in there is play in the hinge there's always going to be I mean you can get expensive hinges with no play but uh, most most hinges are going to have some play in them but as soon as the, the dowel engages the thing is square, rock solid, and it's just not going to move. I'm blown away with this. I'm really, really pleased. Electric. Or acoustic. I'm really pleased with how this went. I made a couple of mistakes, um, but in fact, recovered really well from them. The um, the, the top uh, where I got the hinge too close to too far away I've ended up with a better product as a result because um, by, by pairing more wood away um, the hinge is further from the dowel and so the whole thing is, is just that little bit more solid so um, yeah in all these things it's not the mistakes you make it's how you recover from them. Um, with hindsight, with the uh, priming the surface with super glue, um, with hindsight, I probably wouldn't have bothered masking the area off. I'd have just covered everything in tongue oil. Um, probably not wax, actually. <laughs> um, mm, yeah, well, maybe. Um, and then just scraped the surface down um, and then primed it with super glue. It seems to work. I think you still have to super glue. The felt on. I don't think this felt is, is really designed to go round corners, it's just supposed to stick on a flat surface. But it, it's pretty secure now, so the super glue does, does really bond it quite well. Um, there were a couple of things that with hindsight I might have done uh, differently. Well not, not, not so much hindsight, the, the, the finishing of it, I think I would have liked to have put more coats of tongue oil on, but that would have taken a week just to do the finishing because you, you've got to wait a day. Or I could have got the quick drying tongue oil, um, but even so, you probably can only do two applications a day. Probably, you still need, I think, four hours. Um, and then the only other thing is the these um, bolts here. I'm, I, if I had more time, I um, probably would make some dowels to go in there. And I suspect you can buy caps. Um, brown plastic caps that will fit in though. These are whole, half inch holes. Um, I suspect somebody somewhere sells some little caps that you can put in there, although these two holes are quite close together. Um, so nothing I would have done differently, um, just things I might have done extra if I'd have had more time. But uh, really, really pleased and this is going to serve me well. So uh, yeah, great little project. Thank you for watching. And we'll uh, see you in future videos. Bye.